Hello, everyone. I thought it might be interesting to talk a little bit about lenses and sensor sizes and how they relate to achieving a shallow depth of field in an image. It is often implied that depth of field is purely due to sensor size, or there may be an example given that some specific small sensor will have half the background blur of some larger sensor. In certain situations, that may essentially work out to be the case, but technically, sensor size has nothing to do with depth of field. And like the head of the central bureaucracy in Futurama says, technically correct is the best kind of correct. I know, it sounds ridiculous to say that sensor size has nothing to do with depth of field, and some of you are probably already calling me out in the comments. But it's technically true, so hear me out. Background blur is purely a function of the lens and has nothing to do with the size of the sensor that lens is connected to. Sensor size does play a role, if only indirectly, due to its effect on field of view. The camera industry uses the 35mm or full frame equivalent standard when talking about field of view. This is pretty convenient because it gives a standard reference from which to base field of view expectations for various lens and sensor combinations. Field of view is indirectly the reason why smaller sensors end up having less background blur. But let's put that aside for a moment and let's talk about a few lens fundamentals. First is focal length. Focal length is pretty simple. The distance between what is sometimes called the optical center of the lens and the focal plane at a sensor is called the focal length. The longer the focal length is, the narrower the field of view will be that the lens provides. Next up is the effective or clear aperture. The effective aperture is essentially the physical size of the unobstructed or clear diameter through which light can enter the lens. There may be other optical or physical factors inside the lens that can limit the effective aperture, but it will never be larger than the size of the first element of the lens because that is the maximum area of light that can possibly enter the lens. The larger this clear aperture, the more light can enter the lens, but also the larger this aperture, the shallower the depth of field. Depth of field is purely a result of the size of the effective aperture of the lens. That's it. Not the sensor size, not the focal length, and technically not even the focal ratio, just the aperture. Speaking of the focal ratio, the F number of a lens doesn't directly represent the size of the aperture. It's actually the ratio of aperture to focal length. So the focal ratio is simply the focal length divided by the effective aperture. If you have a lens with a focal length of 100 millimeters and an effective aperture of 50 millimeters, it will have a focal ratio of two and it would be called an F2 lens. Most camera lenses have a way of stopping down or reducing the effective aperture. This aperture adjustment on the lens does physically restrict the diameter of the light path, reducing the effective aperture. This in turn also changes the focal ratio. And since the focal ratio factors in both aperture and focal length, it provides a reasonably accurate representation of the actual amount of light provided to the camera's sensor. So that's generally why the focal ratio is used rather than just the size of the aperture. Each lens creates what is called an image circle. This is a circle of focused light at the focal plane. A larger aperture lets in more light, which makes the image circle brighter. A longer focal length reduces the brightness of the image circle. The ratio between aperture and focal length gives a consistent measure of how bright the image circle will be. Not accounting for losses inside the lens, a 200 millimeter F2 will result in the same amount of light at the image circle as a 20 millimeter F2. Both have a focal length that is twice the aperture size, so the image circles will be similarly bright in both lenses. The longer the focal length, the larger the effective aperture must be in order to maintain the same ratio and therefore the same light levels at the image circle. This is why many zoom lenses are what's called a variable aperture. But that's a bit of a misnomer though because the actual aperture may not change, but since the focal length changes, the ratio changes. In fact, zoom lenses with a fixed focal ratio, for example, a 70 to 200 f2.8, actually have a variable aperture in order to maintain the fixed ratio and therefore a fixed brightness 
throughout the zoom range. But how does any of this matter to depth of field and background blur? Well, as mentioned, the larger the effective aperture, the shallower the depth of field. Longer focal length doesn't directly provide a shallower depth of field. However, a 100mm f2 lens will have a much shallower depth of field than a 50mm f2 lens, because remember, f2 is a ratio, not the actual aperture size. So a 100mm f2 lens has twice the effective aperture size as a 50mm f2. A longer focal length also compresses the perspective of the image and can make a similar amount of bokeh and background blur appear more pronounced. But a longer focal length alone doesn't technically reduce depth of field. So how does all this relate to sensor size? Well, since depth of field is purely a characteristic of the lens, you could take any particular lens and put it on cameras with smaller and smaller sensors and the amount of background blur wouldn't change at all. You will be using a smaller and smaller portion of the image circle, resulting in a smaller and smaller field of view in the resulting image, but nothing else about the image would change. In fact, it would be extremely similar to cropping an image after the fact. You're getting a smaller and smaller field of view, but the image compression due to the focal length and the depth of field due to the aperture are products of the lens, and they've already happened by the time the light gets to the focal plane at the sensor. So using a smaller part of the lens's image circle doesn't change the depth of field. Put more simply, a 50 millimeter f2 lens will have the exact same depth of field and background blur on a full frame sensor or a tiny sensor out of an action camera. But here's where we finally get back to the whole 35 millimeter equivalent field of view topic, because that tiny sensor will also have a comparatively tiny field of view. So field of view becomes a very important factor. For instance, at any given focal length, a micro four thirds sensor will have half the field of view that a full frame sensor would have with the same lens. This is often referred to as a crop factor. And like I said before, it, it works out almost exactly the same as cropping an image after the fact. It's just, you know, it, it, in a given scenario, how much smaller will the field of view be with the smaller sensor? This means that a 25 millimeter lens used with a micro four thirds sensor will have the same field of view as a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor. That's why a 25 millimeter lens is said to have a 50 millimeter equivalent field of view on a micro four thirds sensor because it's equivalent to a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame. So in order to achieve a certain field of view, smaller sensors will require shorter focal length lenses. As we covered before, focal length doesn't directly determine depth of field. But here's the rub. A shorter focal length lens would result in a lower focal ratio if the aperture size stayed the same. And aperture size is what determines depth of field. Optically, low focal ratios are very difficult to achieve, especially while maintaining good image quality. A focal ratio below one means that the aperture is actually larger than the focal length. Once you get focal ratios that low, the light towards the outer portion of the lens diameter has to be refracted very dramatically in order to reach the same focal point as light from closer to the center of the lens. This makes it extremely difficult to achieve good results with super low focal ratios. Focal ratios of one or below exist, but they're uncommon, and when you get to really small sensors, it just becomes impossible to make the kinds of focal ratios that would be required in order to have physically large lens apertures. Even a 25 millimeter F0.95 still has a physically smaller effective aperture than a 50 millimeter F1.4. So the 50 millimeter F1.4 will have a shallower depth of field and probably better optical quality when both have the aperture set wide open. And therein lies the reason why smaller sensors generally provide less background blur potential. They simply cannot get usable fields of view in lenses with large apertures. Things like action cameras, small camcorders, and point and shoot cameras typically advertise their 35 millimeter equivalent focal lengths. So they may say they have a 25 millimeter equivalent focal length because they have a field of view equivalent to a 25 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. But if you look at the actual focal lengths of some of those lenses, they are often in the low single digits in order to have that field of view.
a 4mm f2 lens has a 2mm sized clear aperture. A 25mm f2 lens has a 12.5mm clear aperture. Since both are f2, both would produce images that were equally bright, but a 25mm f2 has a physical aperture size that is over 6 times larger than a 4mm f2 lens. It will therefore have a far shallower depth of field and provide far more background blur. So a smaller sensor doesn't technically create an image with a larger depth of field, but it does typically require the use of lenses that have a much larger depth of field. So while it's all down to the lens, in practice, it basically amounts to the same thing. So I know that was a whole lot of rambling about stuff that most people probably don't care about, and in the end, it's all about a technicality that doesn't matter all that much in practice. But if you ever wondered why a smaller sensor doesn't achieve the same background blur as a larger sensor, now you know. Hopefully that was helpful or interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.